Hello, my beautiful friends. I am Laurel Bleeden Maffei with Illuminating Souls, welcoming you to this episode of Sleepy Bedtime Blessings, a podcast designed to help you rest, relax, and fall asleep, all while deepening in your connection with your beautiful team of angels who love you so. If we're meeting for the first time, I am an angelic practitioner, a spiritual teacher, and an encourager of souls. And I have the best job ever. (laughs) I get to help you awaken to your magic, I get to help you connect with your angels. I get to help inspire your heart. And I have several different kinds of offerings. One is one-on-one angel sessions, which are wonderful. They take place over the phone. And they're about one hour in length. And we bring in the angels and we have conversation And we help you connect with your divine guidance. And then I also offer soul mentoring, which is designed to bring you ongoing support as you move through a time of growth or transformation. I typically encourage people to start with a 12-week package. And so we meet every week over the phone. And it allows me to track with you and in some ways get in the boat with you as a metaphor. And typically I only take a handful of clients at a time. So if that sounds like something that would support you, feel free to reach out. And then I offer a variety of classes. It's always changing. I listen to the angels, we collaborate and we come up with different classes about every six weeks. So I invite you to sign up for my mailing list at my website, illuminatingsouls.com, and you'll be in the know of everything I have coming up. You can also visit me at my Facebook page, Illuminating Souls, where I post daily inspirational messages for you. But for now, The angels and I are here to help you come into a beautiful space of rest. We are going to bring to you soothing, calming energies. I'm going to share with you some spiritual encouragement that is (laughs) non-denominational. So it'll be sweet and graceful. And then I'm going to share some stories with you. So there's always a story time segment that runs for about 40 minutes, but the whole episode's about an hour. So you have plenty of time to rest and hopefully drift off to sleep if you are using this at bedtime. This is a little bit of a different kind of podcast than you might be used to. You know, most podcasts are hoping that you listen for the entire episode. (laughs) This is the kind of podcast that you can drift off to, though. I have no expectation that you will be listening for the full hour. Because hopefully, at some point, especially if you're using this as a bedtime tool, that at some point you'll drift off. And I'll get to keep you company because what I have found is someone who listens to sleep podcasts every single night is that there is something really beautiful about having a kind, friendly, familiar voice chattering on in the background while your consciousness lets go of the day that was and makes space to go into that beautiful mystery of sleep. So if that is your intention, it is my blessing to be with you. 
And it is my blessing to be with you if you are using this during your waking hours and I get to keep you company while you're driving or going about your day. However it is you're using this podcast, I am grateful for this opportunity to be with you. And my friends, I wanted to take a moment to give a shout out to another podcast that has been created by someone I love very, very much. The subject matter is different than this one. It is my cousin Kathy's new podcast. You know, the thing that I love so much about the podcasting genre is they're podcasts for everything. You can have a podcast, really, if, if you have a subject that you want to talk about, share about, you can make a podcast. And so my cousin Kathy, who's one of my favorite people on the planet, she has chronic illness. She has ME-CFS and she has MS and She had to stop working a few years ago. And so she uses her platform on social media to talk about chronic illness and disability rights. And and she, she always manages to inspire my heart with what she shares. And I learned so much from her. And so she just launched a podcast called That Chronic Thing. And I'm so happy for her, and I'm so happy for all the people who will be listening. So if you have a chronic illness, or you love someone with a chronic illness, I invite you to check out her podcast. You know, simply by design and the work that I do, I'm a very empathic person. And so over the years, I have like to think I have had tremendous empathy for what she's going through and others like her are going through. But I tell you, there is nothing like hearing on a day-to-day basis the experiences and the challenges that happen as well as the revelations that really help me to drop into deep empathy and love and connection, not only with Kathy, but with the other people who I come across in my day-to-day life who also have chronic illness. So whether you know someone who's going through long COVID or has ME-CFS or fibromyalgia or Lyme disease I invite you to check out her podcast and you can also find her on Instagram at healthy Madel. Madel is M A D E L. So healthy Madel. And she is wonderful and I'm so happy for her and I'm so happy to support her. She had taken my podcasting class that started was it, I don't know, two months ago. And then she just decided to go for it. (laughs) And so now she has her podcast. So thank you for letting me take a few minutes of this podcast to share with you about her. You know, light work comes in all different forms. And Each of us has the opportunity to repurpose our experiences and service to supporting others. And so, Kathy, I celebrate you and I'm grateful for you. And for each one of you beautiful friends who listen to this podcast, I am grateful for you as well. I know you bring your light into this world every single day. And this world is better because you are here. I love that we get to be on this path together. 
that we get to help make this world a little bit better each and every day. And so, my friends, I invite you to take a deep breath in and get comfortable in your body and allow the angels to bring to you comforting, soothing, light-filled energy. And if you are preparing for bed, I invite you to cozy on up and snuggle on in. One of my favorite times of the day is when I get to crawl into bed. I love bed. (laughs) I love getting to crawl in at the end of the day, knowing that I have lived another day here on planet Earth, and I have done whatever I wanted to do and needed to do, and my body starts getting drowsy, and I crawl into bed, usually before my husband does, he usually stays up a bit later than I do, and I put in my earbuds and I pick a podcast episode to listen to, and then I drift off. And I go to bed fairly early, which usually is around 8 p.m. I have inherited my father's circadian rhythm. I always used to make fun of him as a kid. We all did because he went to bed so early, but my dad was up by four. And um, the universe has a sense of humor because now that is me. (laughs) I go to bed super early and I'm usually awake by three or four, I don't get up. I'm still in bed. And I might listen to another podcast. More often than not, Wes, my husband, is awake as well, and we might have conversation as we figure out the world together in the wee hours of the morning. And I love that time of the night, the wee hours of the morning, when everything is quiet. There's a sanctity to that time of the evening. And so somehow I have fallen into this rhythm. So now it is early in the morning as I record this for you. I am underneath the blanket fort. For those of you who are listeners, you know that I put a big old cozy blanket over my computer monitor and tent it over my head so that the sound is dampened. I figured out this trick because other podcasters had shared that they record in closets and things like that so that the sound is better. And when I went to make this podcast, I knew that I wanted it to have a cozy, quiet sound quality to it. And so I thought, hey, let me just throw a blanket (laughs) over the monitor in my head. And, And then I dubbed it the blanket fort because that just sounds very enchanting, doesn't it? So I broadcast to you from my blanket fort here in Vallejo, California, in the early morning hours before the sun is up. And as I record this to you, I feel the angels are here sending you beautiful waves of love. Before I started recording, I pulled an angel card from one of my favorite oracle decks. And the card that I got is the card that says support. And the image on the card is the image of the earth. And above the earth, there is a group of spirit guides and angels. And they have their hands out palms forward towards the earth and they are sending the earth light. So whenever this card shows up, 
It is a reminder that we have the opportunity each and every breath to receive divine support. That right now your angels are with you and they are shining love upon you. And the thing about divine support is that we have to choose to open to it. Well, we don't have to. It certainly can make its way in. You know, it's sort of like when you pull the curtains and the sunlight still comes in. But it's easier to let the sunlight in a room when you intentionally open the curtains, right? (laughs) Versus the sun just trying to sneak around a corner where the curtains might not be pulled all the way. Opening, asking for divine support is like opening the curtains on a window. It allows it to flow more easily to you because this is a realm of free will and you get to choose. So in this moment, I invite you to open to the love of your angels. And I'm going to call them in even though they are already here. So beautiful angels on high, I invite you to join us here. And I ask that you infuse this broadcast with waves of love, waves of goodness, and waves of light. And dear ones, just take some nice deep breaths in and allow yourself to receive the serenity of the angelic light that is flowing to you now. The angels, they know what is going on in your life. They know your worries. They know your burdens. They know your dreams, and they are here now supporting you. So if there is anywhere in your life where you would like to receive their support or their assistance, simply ask them now in consciousness. And you can be informal. My conversations with the angels often is like, hey, angels, (laughs) I could use some help. And then I ask, for instance, as I record this, I can say, angels, will you help deliver this podcast to more people? Right? That sounds like a good request. Help this podcast ripple out into the world to find those that has come here to serve and help our audience grow in the way it is divinely designed to do so. And angels, I ask that you send love and blessings and miracles to each one of our beloveds listening right now. And that would mean you. (laughs) So ask. You ask as I ask for you. You can ask for yourself. So angels, I ask that you help me get a really good night's sleep tonight. I ask that you bring me the sweetest of dreams I ask that you help me connect with sparks of inspiration that will bring grace to my path in the days and weeks ahead. And then, dear ones, just take a breath and let the love meet you where you are. Divine support is here with you now. And breathe and allow your body to receive this love. And the angels and I breathe with you now as well. So my beautiful friend, you rest well 
And if you're not resting right now, you just enjoy and let the love come to you. And while you do, the angels will be with you. And I'm going to read to you and ramble through some stories to keep you company. So for this episode, I thought we could flip through the pages of another old TV guide. For those of you who are regular listeners, you know that I love to do this on occasion. And this is a TV guide that I purchased in an antique shop a few months ago. And it is from 1979. And what's interesting is I thought that I had gone through this already for you. I must have done another November episode in 1979. But as I looked through it, I don't remember sharing this one with you. So this is November 3rd through 9th, 1979. And on the cover are the dashing duo of Stephanie Powers and Robert Wagner, who co-starred in Heart to Heart. Now, we used to watch Heart to Heart in our house because my mom loved Robert Wagner. And if you don't know who Robert Wagner is, well, he's profoundly handsome. And he was also in Switch with Eddie Albert. And he played Tony Dinozo's father in NCIS. And Stephanie Powers is just beautiful. And she has also starred in other things, but I think her big, the big thing that she is known for is Heart to Heart. And I was reading her Wikipedia. She also starred in Judith Krantz's Mistral's Daughter which was a made-for-TV movie of the best-selling book. And Judith Krantz used to write all kinds of steamy, fictional books about Hollywood. So I'm sure that at some point I watched that made-for-TV movie, but I have no recollection of it. And I know I read the book, and I can't tell you what it's about, because this would have been, let's say, 1979, what, 40 years ago, which is terrifying more than 40 years ago. So in 79, I would have been 17 years old. So I would have been just starting my senior year in high school, which I will say was a terrible time. I hated high school. (laughs) I was not a happy camper at this time in my life. I had a a lovely group of friends. Um, They didn't go to the same high school as I did. So I didn't necessarily have my pod of safety at my high school. And I definitely felt like a duck out of water there, which I think is pretty much par for the course for most people in high school. I, I don't know many people who thought high school was the best time ever. But anyways, that's not what we're going to talk about right now. We are going to talk about TV in November of 1979 here in the United States. Because I realize we have international listeners, and you might not know the programs that I'm talking about, but hopefully I will keep this mildly amusing, um, but also dull enough that you can fall asleep if that is your desire We start off with a two-page ad, a two, what is it, two-page spread ad, I guess is what they would call that in the advertising industry, for the 1980 Chevy Citation. It's a whole new kind of compact car. So adults can ride comfortably, bags of groceries will fit inside, (laughs) that's good. The estimated MPG is 38 on the highway, 38 miles per gallon on the highway. It's got a um, 2.5 liter, two barrel, four cylinder. (laughs) I don't know why this is cracking me up. I think it is because my first car ever was 
a Pontiac T1000, which is the corporate twin to the Chevy Chevette. So I definitely drove a low-end compact car when I was coming of age. Also, this being 1979 and TV Guide, there will be a lot of cigarette ads, which I will not share with you. We open up the content of this TV Guide with a little snippet of what we can expect. So Ginger Rogers and Douglas Fairbanks Jr. are among the passengers sailing soon on ABC's Love Boat which was always what I would be watching on a Saturday night. I don't know how excited I would have been about Ginger Rogers and Douglas Fairbanks Jr. at that point, although now I can see the brilliance of it for sure. And now we come to another two-page spread. It is an ad for, and wait for it, especially for those of you who are around my age and I'm 60, So if you have memories of 1979, when you were perhaps anywhere between a preteen and teen or early 20s, how many of you remember Babe, Fabergé, Babe, Cologne? (laughs) With the round cap on it, if you saw this ad, you would remember it in a heartbeat. So this is for new babe splash and antiperspirants that don't clash. I remember that Fabergé, I think, also made Love's Fresh Lemon scent, which was my personal favorite. Because even back then, I was not a big fan of floral, perfumey things. But lemons I liked, so I was a Love's Fresh Lemon girl, not a babe girl, but perhaps you liked Babe. We then come to a relatively long article about John Chancellor, who was an anchor person for a long time on the NBC Nightly News. I think it was NBC. I should know that, right? It just says the Nightly News. I think it was NBC, though. If I'm wrong about that, I am sorry. Um, but we're going to keep going. Oh, it is NBC. Awesome. I was right about that, but I'm not going to read you that article because let's get on to what I think is more entertaining material, not to say that Mr. Chancellor's life is not interesting, but you know, we want to sort of move on to things like the love boat and happy days, right? Because I'm going to flip through this issue as if I was still (laughs) that 17-year-old girl, so I for sure would have flipped past this article. There is an article here about the special effects and the making of Buck Rogers with Gil Gerard. It was Buck Rogers in the 25th century. I remember that show, but I don't think we watched it, but it's an article about that. And then there's an article um, that says, Are the Nets and the Paramedics Ready? With the headline that says, When action begins on the Guinness game, its producers are prepared for the worst. So they must have been making a show. It says here, the producer, Hill, is anxious to dispel the notion that Guinness game is another gong show. (laughs) So I don't know what they were going for. I have no recollection of that show. But I do remember there was like the celebrity circus of the stars kind of thing and somehow watching people do daring feats was a big thing back then. Then, again, if you're in my age group, you will remember these. There's an ad for legs pantyhose. Remember the legs pantyhose and they came in the egg? Like, that was a big thing back then. Pantyhose came in an egg. (laughs) That's what we bought. And also, how about the horror of having to wear pantyhose? Like, you had to wear pantyhose if you were wearing a skirt and you were a woman. (laughs) You were a girl. I hated pantyhose. Because I never lived in a body with that blessing called a thigh gap. 
And so me and pantyhose, we were not good friends. Oh, I remember you had to have, you know, the tummy control pantyhose or the reinforced toes. And then if you were wearing sandals, you had to get the one with the bare toes, like sandals and pantyhose. Oh my God, I am so glad that I have grown out of that phase of my life. I have not owned pantyhose in easily 30 years. I gave up on them a long time ago, but I do remember pantyhose and an egg. <laughs> Legs. And then there's an interesting article that says a new study shows pay cable is a threat to network programs because we were just about to start the era where pay television was going to start eroding our network viewing. So this is very predictive of what would happen. And it says here, the home box office presentation of the film Looking for Mr. Goodbar, how many of you remember that, was seen in more pay cable homes than the concluding episode of Roots the Next Generations, The Sound of Music, and, wait for it, Celebrity Challenge of the Sexes. Okay, what do you think I was watching? It may have been Sound of Music because my mother would have absolutely lobbied for watching that over Celebrity Challenge of the Sexes. But you know that I watched Celebrity Challenge of the Sexes at some point, right? You've got to know that that's what I was watching. And then it says a Barry Manilow special, and Barry Manilow was huge back then. Attracted as many pay cable viewers as NBC's premiere presentation of One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. So, so things were starting to change there. We didn't have cable at that point. I don't think we got cable until a few years later. But that was a, a big change in our society. And then it has the ratings leaders. So these are the top 15 prime time shows, according to the latest AC Nielsen company figures. So the top two spots are taken by the World Series games. I don't know who was playing back then, but it went to game seven. So I'm sure that was interesting. And number three is MASH. Of course, we watched MASH. WKRP in Cincinnati. I watched that. Little House on the Prairie, probably watched. 60 Minutes, for sure was on in our house, even if I didn't watch it. One Day at a Time, we watched that. The Jeffersons, yes. Alice, yes. Dallas, for sure. World Series pregame, again, don't care. <laughs> Lou Grant, which I to this day think was a brilliant show. Wes and I just were watching, I can't remember what show it was, but it was a show about reporters. Oh, I know what it was. It was Daily Alaska or Alaska Daily with Hillary Swank. And it's one of the network shows here in the U.S. And I watched it on Hulu. What we did, my husband and I watched it on Hulu and it was really good. And I said, you know, we need more reporter shows. And I started waxing poetic about Lou Grant. I really like that show. And then we have Trapper John MD, which we watched, but it was really, I don't know if you loved MASH, it wasn't a for sure that you would love Trapper John MD, but it was a good show. And then the Dukes of Hazard, which I'm sure I watched at some point, but I don't ever remember enjoying that show too much. And, and then there's an ad for the next week's TV guide, and they're going to be featuring the Bee Gees, who were, you know, gods back then, you know, just coming off Saturday Night Fever. So that would have been exciting. I'm sure I would have tried to get that issue of TV guide. So here's the screening room where they're sort of giving us some of the highlights for the week. We've got Disney's Wonderful World is going to be showing 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Wes loves that movie. I don't know that I've ever seen it all the way through. 
On Monday, they're showing The White Shadow. Again, brilliant show. I loved that show, and my mom did too. Um, And I'm sure my dad, I don't mean to make it sound like my dad is not present, but if you reference earlier in the episode, my father was usually falling asleep somewhere around 7 or 8 o'clock. He might not have been in bed, but he was either in the chair in the living room or he was in the chair in the basement sleeping. So I don't necessarily remember what he would have lobbied for on television. Also, they're going to be showing WKRP in Cincinnati and some other stuff. (laughs) There's always going to be other stuff. I'm not going to share with you everything that's going to be on. Okay, so we're going to start with Saturday. And so, of course, Saturday morning is the world of cartoons, but at this point, I'm 17 years old. So in all likelihood, I am probably sleeping until noon because that's what teenagers do. So I probably was not awake and watching any television at this point. But just in case you're wondering, um, somewhere around noon, there is a rerun of The Monkees. For those of you keeping track, I did work for Michael Nesmith for many years. He was the one with the hat. Um, So I do have monkeys um, connection in my life. I'm one degree, I guess, of, of a monkey. And for those of you outside of the U.S., just so you know, I'm not talking about an animal. I'm talking about there was a, um, a pop group called The Monkees, M-O-N-K-E-E-S, and it was a TV show. And so one of The Monkees was Michael Nesmith, who I worked for. Okay, we're going to keep going, though. They are showing The Nightwalker on the channel. Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein, a classic that I think at some point as a child I watched and it terrified me. <laughs> I don't think, not I'm like not that it's a scary movie. And my friend David, who also listens to this podcast, he loves horror movies. And probably when he was a kid, he watched that movie and loved it and wanted more. Whereas I watched it and I was like, never again, never again will I watch that movie. Isn't that funny how some people love horror movies and other people cannot stand them? I don't mean cannot stand them. They scare me. I don't know. Anyways, more information than you need to know about me at this point. And we're only at Saturday. I don't know how we're going to get through a whole week of this TV guide, but we'll keep going. All right. I'm going to have to pick up the pace here a little bit. I know we've still got a lot of material to cover, and I know you are looking forward to hearing about all of this. So it's now Saturday at 6.30, which is not prime time yet, but Hee Haw is airing. And growing up in in the suburbs of Chicago, I never saw a full episode of Hee Haw. The Muppet Show is on. Um, Guest Victor Borgia joins Ralph in a piano duet of Hungarian Rhapsody. I'm sure that was hysterical. Victor Borgia not to mention Rolf, or geniuses. So yeah. Oh, and then, wait a second, seven o'clock, Dance Fever with Denny Terrio. You know, disco was a big thing then. You know, that kind of disco dancing show was a thing. I don't know that I ever watched it, but I do have embarrassing stories about trying to disco dance back in the day. But that'll be for another podcast episode or not. Maybe you'll just have to live the rest of your life never knowing about how I really wanted to be a super cool. Actually, that's making it too important. You know, my girlfriends and I would try to learn the disco dances because that was super cool back then. Okay, we're going to move on. There's another episode of The Muppet Show with Lola Falana who was a very talented dancer back then. And now we're going to move into prime time. So on CBS, there is a show called, a a movie, a Western called Sam Whiskey with, okay, so so let's say it's post-Civil War adventure comedy, because that was really just a time of hijinks and humor. And that was sarcasm, just so you know, with Burt Reynolds as 
an itinerant gambler after fortune and gold bars with Angie Dickinson and Clint Walker. Okay, we would have not watched that. Um, Chips. Wow, there's not a lot to choose from here. Chips, you know, the, it was about the California Highway Patrol with Ponch and John, played by Larry Wilcox and Eric Estrada. We might have watched that. I don't know. Um, it doesn't look like we would have had a lot of other choices. Um, there's an, oh, maybe we would have watched this next one. There was a cartoon, Race for Your Life, Charlie Brown. Although I don't know that I would have been very Charlie Brown oriented when I was 17 years old. And then there was the sitcom, The Ropers, which was a spinoff from Three's Company, which I never liked because I thought they were the least interesting characters on the whole show. But it seems like what every everyone is gearing up for is going to be a made-for-TV movie about MacArthur with Gregory Peck. Which, in all likelihood, we would have had on because of my dad. My dad, this is something my father for sure would have wanted to watch. And perhaps my mom as well. I don't know if I would have watched it. I would have perhaps been talking on the phone with one of my girlfriends or something. Who knows? There's a show I have no recollection about called Detective School with Taylor Negron. Don't remember it. Oh, it's of course, it's Saturday night. So Love Boat is on. Captain Steubing is distressed by news that his young daughter, played by Jill Whalen, ran away from her Acapulco home. And Julie plays matchmaker for two retired singles played by Gail Storm and Louis Nye, or Louis Nye, two former jurors, Vic Tabak and Joanne Flug, who, if you remember, was on Laughing, and Vic Tabak was on Alice. Isn't it terrifying that I remember these things? Who cast opposite votes in a murder trial can't agree on much aboard a ship either. For those of you who loved Monty Python, it is also on Monty Python's Flying Circus. And then at 9.30, there is, it must be a made-for-TV movie called Avalanche. Dun-dun-dun. And the headline says, anyone can survive an avalanche. Eight million tons. Oh, maybe I shouldn't say this if you're trying to sleep. We'll skip that. But it's with Rock Hudson and Mia Farrow. Brilliant. Okay, also it being Saturday night, we have Fantasy Island. In a change of pace episode, Wedding Bells herald the union of Rourke, I didn't know he got married, and his longtime sweetheart, played by Samantha Egger. Okay, I don't know what happened there, but okay. Probably was watching it. And for Saturday night, those of you who would have loved um, Abbott and Costello Frankenstein, you perhaps would have also enjoyed the original Frankenstein with Boris Karloff. So you could have had a whole Frankenstein-themed day on Saturday. I wouldn't have, though, but perhaps you would. There is also going to be a sound stage, if you guys remember that. That was a rock concert kind of thing. And appearing in concert, listen to this lineup. Gordon Lightfoot, Oscar Peterson, I don't remember who he is, although I'm sure he was very talented. The Temptations, the Doobie Brothers, Chick Corea, Al Jarreau, Joni Mitchell, Ella Fitzgerald. I mean, this is fantastic. And of course, Saturday Night Live. So the host for Saturday Night Live is basketball great Bill Russell. And at this point, we still have Lorraine Newman, Gilda Radner, and Jane Curtin. I don't know who else was on at this point. Interesting that they just list the women, which is kind of cool, but I'm just saying. And then there's something at 1 a.m., which I would not have watched, jukebox with Eddie Money and 10CC. If that is not a flashback to the late 70s. 
And also in the wee hours of the morning, we've got Shanana. <laughs> Shanana's variety show. If you know, you know. And at 3.20 a.m., which I for sure would not have been up watching, and also this is not a national broadcast, but they were showing MASH with Donald Sutherland and Elliot Gould, which is a phenomenal movie. And so we're going to just segue on into Sunday. So we already talked about Disney's wonderful world of 20,000 leagues under the sea and 60 minutes, which if you've been listening, you know that that's what we're watching in our house. I don't think my parents ever missed an episode of 60 Minutes. And then there's this weird ad for bicycle playing cards. And this is the headline. Be a lousy lover tonight. What does that mean? <laughs> does that mean you're not going to give your um, spouse some nookie because you're playing poker? Like, What does that mean? I don't know. Anyways, that's what it says. <laughs> Be a lousy lover tonight. Bicycle playing cards. Okay. Good to know. All right. They're going to be airing Jaws, which I think we all saw at that point, right? Jaws. And part two of the MacArthur movie with Gregory Peck. Oh, I for sure know what we would have been watching. I, I don't know. Or maybe I had to watch it in the basement if my dad wanted to watch MacArthur in the living room. I don't know. Mork and Mindy was on, which was a massively popular show back then. And in this episode, Mork's apprehension over Mindy's tonsillectomy turns to terror when a hospital error schedules her for brain surgery. Oh, oh, the hijinks. <laughs> It's like, whoops, oh, I forgot. You're going to get brain surgery instead. Okay, and then we probably followed up with one day at a time. A psychiatrist recommends a heart-to-heart -heart talk to take the heat out of Anne's relationship with her mother, played by Nanette Fabre. I forgot that. She was in that with her. Also airing on Sunday night is an episode of Alice, so Vera's boyfriend objects to her sketching nude males in art class. Very titillating. And <laughs> in the Jeffersons, George digs out his father's unopened will and concludes that he should dig up dear old dad. <laughs> I don't know why I find these things funny to read them. And then at the 10 o'clock hour, we have Trapper John. So Gonzo, played by Gregory Harrison, receives a beautiful princess in payment for treating a grateful sheik, while Trapper, played by Pernell Roberts, tries to reunite an ailing 14-year-old runaway with his mother. I'm sure I watched that, although I have no recollection of it. And then there's an ad for Mike Douglas, because we're getting ready for the week ahead, so just stay tuned for more Mike in a moment. And so as we start flipping into Monday, Glenn Campbell is going to be on Merv, Merv Griffin, and on Mike Douglas, newlyweds Kate Jackson and Andrew Stevens are the co-host with Joanne Woodward and Jane Fonda. So Kate Jackson was in Charlie's Angels, and Andrew Stevens was in those made-for-TV movies of The Bastard and The Rebel, I thought he was adorable. So I kind of, I had like a mild crush on him, certainly not a big celebrity crush. I just thought he was very cute. And Norman Mailer is going to be on Phil Donahue, which I wouldn't have watched, but I just think that's interesting. And back in the day, as I recall, the 3.30 time slot was important. They, they would often do after school specials. And this week they are rerunning Roots, which was such a profound show and started to shift the dialogue of the country. So Roots is airing at 3.30. And also there, another network is, or another station, 
is running Humphrey Bogart movies. And of course, Merv Griffin and Mike Douglas. And the thing that I remember about like the 3.30 time slot up until about five o'clock was being in school. We were home by then. So we got to watch TV and this is before Netflix and this is before cable. So you had to watch what was on. So the syndication game was big then. So Mary Tyler Moore, Bob Newhart, MASH, or one of the talk shows like Mike Douglas or Phil Donahue or Merv Griffin. So that was the kind of stuff that we would watch when we got home from school. So in prime time on CBS, we have White Shadow. I loved that show. So Carver High versus the Harlem Globetrotters. The Carver basketball team is on a 10-game winning streak, and the players' arrogance about it is starting to irk everyone, especially Coach Reeves, played by Ken Howard, who feels his squad could do with a much-needed humbling. I could bring in a team of old men off the street, he tells his cocky cagers, that would take you guys to the cleaners. Name the time and place, they retort, little suspecting that the pickup team Reeves has assembled from a local car wash is in reality the Harlem Globetrotters. Okay, and I guess here is a good place to interject some interesting Harlem Globetrotters trivia, which is the gentleman that founded the Harlem Globetrotters was Abe Saperstein. And Abe Saperstein was associated with the temple that we went to, Temple Beth Israel. And so growing up, every once in a while, the Harlem Globetrotters would put an event for our temple or for our grammar school at East Prairie. So I don't know. I always felt a connection with the Harlem Globetrotters. Not that I knew any of them, but I did, did get to attend events where they were performing. I seem to recall they came to the temple at some point, not a service, of course, more like an event. And also, I think they came to our grammar school at some point. Okay, and then there's an ad here. There's an evening magazine, you know, those sorts of news magazines that would be big before I guess this would be prime time. It's about Sally Field, and the headline is Burt Reynolds' girlfriend. (laughs) Like, that's what she was known for? I mean, I know that they dated, but boy, she's an incredible actress. So it says, Sally Field just won Best Actress at the Cannes Film Festival. What's Burt Reynolds' girlfriend really like? (laughs) Oh my God. I don't know why that makes me so mad for her. She's awesome. Anyways, I guess that's how they are advertising her. I don't know what her PR team must have said about that. Okay, also, Pete and Tilly, a movie, is on with Carol Burnett and Walter Matthau. An offbeat adult love story about a spinster in her 30s. Oh my God, do you guys remember that word? Spinster in her 30s? Like oh my God, that is so old and tragic that she is not married by then. That's just terrible. Okay, um, let's start over. In an offbeat adult love story about a spinster, air quotes, I'm putting in the air quotes, they didn't, in her 30s and a wisecracking bachelor. Okay, so he gets to be a wisecracking bachelor, super cool, because he has chosen not to get married yet. And she is a spinster because she isn't married. Does that just not tell you about the societal norms at that point in time? I'm just mad for everyone in that. Sally Fields is listed as Burt Reynolds' girlfriend. (laughs) And a spinster versus the wisecracking bachelor. Thank God we have evolved past then. 
Okay, I'm going to keep going, though. So, Little House on the Prairie, Victor French reprises his role as Mr. Edwards, now a success in the logging business, until a crippling accident destroys his will to live. I mean, that's pretty substantial. But I'm sure Laura and Pa and Ma can help him get back on his feet, as it were. All right, and then on Monday, I didn't watch this, but I'm fascinated by it. I don't remember this, but I guess there was a show called 240 Robert, which involves Mark Harmon, a very, very young Mark Harmon. And also they are going to be airing the movie Heroes with Henry Winkler and Sally Field. At least here they are not mentioning Burt Reynolds at all. And then in smaller type, and also starring Harrison Ford. (sighs) Okay, I don't know what was going on at that point, but I would imagine Harrison Ford should get a little bit of a bigger font here. First time on television. He is a shook-up soldier, and she's a runaway bride, and their plan is to escape from the world. Well, that sounds like a phenomenal plan. And here is why, in all likelihood, we watched neither the movie Heroes in our house nor 240 Robert with Mark Harmon because MASH was on. And I guarantee you that is what we were watching as probably were most homes in the United States at that point. And in this episode, our Korean mother accuses Klinger, played by Jamie Farr, of disgracing her daughter. Hawkeye, played brilliantly by Alan Alda, runs into complications, keeping a promise to a dying soldier. And this is the era of MASH where Colonel Potter and BJ Honeycutt are in the cast. And then there was 240 Robert, which I wouldn't have watched, although perhaps later because I did kind of have a little Mark Harmon thing, but I wouldn't have watched that for sure. And then one of the independent stations is airing Airport 1975. And who remembers that whole slew of disaster movies? Poseidon Adventure, (laughs) Towering Inferno, Airport 1975, and the original Airport. I loved all of those movies for some reason. Also airing is WKRP in Cincinnati, where Carlson, played by Gordon Jump, regrets that he ever tossed his hat into the ring for city council after he impulsively smears an opponent in a TV debate. And then we've got Lou Grant. Again, loved that show. Don't mean to overemphasize that. Gambling fever strikes the trib as Lou is touted on a long shot. Animal learns the meaning. I remember Animal. Do you remember he was the photographer? That So that's a character's name animal. Animal learns the meaning of a vigorous, oh, I guess that's it, a vigorous. I thought maybe that was an an adjective. I don't know what a vigorous is. A vigor, okay. Gambling fever, let's try this again. Gambling fever strikes the trib as Lou is touted on a long shot. Animal learns the meaning of vigorous, and Billy makes a risky loan to a gambler. What do we think vigorish is representing here? Okay, I guess I'll go look that up. Hold on. Okay, so so here is what our friend Google says about vigorish. An excessive rate of interest on a loan, typically one from an illegal moneylender, and the percentage deducted from a gambler's winnings by the organizers of a game. Okay, well, I learned something new. I'm assuming that most of you perhaps did not know that term, but now this makes sense. Gambling fever strikes the trib. As Lou is touted on a long shot, an animal learns the meaning of vigorous, because clearly animal placed a bet on this, and and some kind of hijinks ensued. And then we move to, 
11 p.m., which at this point is the local news or syndicated programming, because we have Love American Style. This is not the first run of Love American Style, but this would be reruns in syndication. And this is one with Joanne Worley and Gail Fisher and stories about cutting mother's apron strings and shaking an ex-husband. On DeCavitt, Hal Holbrook is scheduled. Johnny Carson has a guest host this week of David Brenner with singing group Sister Sledge and Marvin Hamlish. And then if you're going to stay up late, there is, I guess, a a rerun of an old Carol Burnett that must have been in syndication, Joanne Woodward, plays Eunice's free-living friend from the past who visits the family. The Honeymooners, which was always good to catch in reruns. The Love Boat, again a rerun. In this one, a feuding couple, Barbara Rhodes and Dick Gautier, a shy young man, Paul Williams, and a swinging widow, Michelle Lee, delight a gossip columnist played by Marsha Wallace with their game of musical cabins. At 1 a.m. is The Tomorrow Show with Tom Snyder, for any of you that remember that, and Billy Crystal and David Letterman are among the guests in a show first telecast in 1978. I bet that would have been a good interview with Billy Crystal and David Letterman. And so that only brings us to Monday. We still have a bunch more content to get through. So we will return back to this issue of TV Guide in another episode. But I will just tell you, because I flipped the page already, that if you were home on Tuesday morning, so I often had, quote, stomach aches and did not go to school I would have my mom call me out sick more often than not because I hated school and I didn't have the language to say, I fricking hate school. I don't want to go. So I'm going to manifest stomach issues. So I would often be home watching television on a weekday. So just in case there was Good Morning America with David Hartman, that's when he was hosting it. Captain Kangaroo, which I would not have been watching at that age, but I certainly watched in my childhood. Romper Room, Mr. Rogers, Partridge Fam. You guys, it's the Partridge Family with Bobby Sherman. Wait a second. Do you know about this episode? I talked about this in Celebrity Crushes. So Partridge Family on its own was an awesome show because David Cassidy, right? But the first man I ever loved was Bobby Sherman, another teen idol. And this is the Partridge Family episode with Bobby Sherman as he guest stars as a rock composer in search of a lyricist. And this was an important episode at the time, not in 1979, but when it first aired, because Bobby Sherman and David Cassidy were on screen together. So this would have been years later. But if I was home, I would have probably watched it, even though I was 17 years old and far too cool for this. But for nostalgia purposes, I might have watched that. And then Hollywood Squares, who does not remember that show. And this week, we've got Valerie Bertinelli, Graham Chapman, Catherine Damon, George Global, Gordon Jump, Joan Prather, Vincent Price, Bill Saluga, and Dottie West. So, I always liked a good Hollywood Squares. Also, an old show, Dr. Kildare, which was in black and white, forget about it, but, you know, Richard Chamberlain, who was profoundly handsome, Also reruns of The Brady Bunch. Greg does not want to follow in Dad's footsteps as an architect. I'm sure that threw the family into a big kerfuffle. Petticoat Junction, I still remember the song. Uncle Joe is in love, and so is Sam. 
Laverne and Shirley, (laughs) the girls, are determined to be in the company's talent show. I'm sure that was hysterical. And Mike Douglas, Lawrence Welk, actor Billy D. Williams, and Disney animator Frank Thomas join co-host Lonnie Anderson. All right, I think we will end there. And we're only at Tuesday morning, so I promise we will return to this at some point and I will take you through the rest of the week as well as where I would have been in my life, which would have probably been at home in my bathrobe, trying to stay out of school, (laughs) watching way too much television because the world was too much for me back then. God bless my heart. This was not like, just do you guys, I don't know. How many of you had a hard time with school? And I just, I, anything I could do to get out of going to school, I would make myself physically sick. Not, I don't mean to make that sound like that's a, a, a conscious choice, but I suffered from these phantom stomach aches, which now I think was probably anxiety. Um, we know so much more now than we used to. But so I watched a lot of television. <laughs> television was my friend. I love, and I, to this day, I love television. Brilliant. I even went to college to study television. That is what my bachelor's degree is in. Television broadcast. Isn't that wonderful? I made my great joys in my life, my career. Just like now, I get to work with the angels. So I have been so lucky. So, okay, that is our journey in the way back machine for now. Perhaps you have drifted off into a lovely state of rest. I wish you love. I wish you sweet dreams. I wish you many, many blessings. And thank you for allowing me to share all of this with you. I hope I brought forward some lovely memories perhaps for you too. So we'll talk again soon. Thank you for listening. I'm so deeply grateful for you. Thank you.